Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in some of the previous lectures, we've used Thevenin equivalent circuits to compute the gains and output impedances of common cathode amplifiers. Here, we're going to use Thevenin equivalents more, but at a higher level. I like to think about Thevenin equivalents as kind of like subroutines in programming languages, functions, methods, whatever you want to call them, depending on your particular programming language. They allow us to abstract the details of a circuit and treat them more like Legos that we can put together. So here's a basic higher level Thevenin equivalent circuit of an amplifier block. We have some sort of input impedance, some sort of output impedance, and we have an amplification by a factor of A. Now, everything I'm showing here is in terms of resistances, but all of this can be made frequency dependent, so you can turn the Rs into Zs, and then A here itself will be a function of frequency in general. But now, for simplicity, I'm just going to leave everything as resistances. So there may be all sorts of complicated stuff out here, all sorts of voltage sources, all sorts of resistors in some sort of complicated network, whatever, whatever, that conspire with our input impedance here to form the voltage Vn. To make things a little bit more concrete, let's suppose that we have a perfect voltage source with no output impedance. So Vn here just matches what we're imagining that we're inputting to the entire amplifier. And this is without loss of generality. If this was a non-ideal voltage source and we did have some sort of output impedance here, you could use a voltage divider rule to figure out what the actual Vn is. Now, in the absence of an external load, there's no current flowing through this resistor, so there's no voltage drop across it, and our output is just A times R input. But if we were to introduce an external load, which here I'm modeling as this resistor, capital R, E, L, this could be a dynamic resistance, it could be a lowercase r, but here let's just suppose it's a resistor. You can make this lowercase r if you want. You could also make it a generic impedance if you want. All of the ideas still apply. So if we have an external load, our output voltage is now seen through a voltage divider. So I have to divide this voltage across this resistance REL. From this expression, let me then define a new kind of gain, a loaded gain that I'm going to represent with the subscript L, where we've taken our original raw gain of the amplifier and applied this voltage divider. And with that defined, we could say, okay, well, with this load, our output is just the input times this loaded gain. Let's see what this looks like for a common cathode stage. In a previous lecture, we computed the gain of a common cathode stage as mu, the amplification factor of the tube itself, times this factor that includes the load resistance, that's part of the circuit, the dynamic plate resistance, and the cathode resistance. We also saw that some amplifiers completely bypass their cathode, and so this term goes away and this whole thing simplifies. We also computed the output impedance to be the load resistance in parallel with this quantity here, including the dynamic resistance and the cathode resistance and the amplification factor mu. I want to emphasize that this RL is not representing an external load to the amplifier. It represents the resistor we place at the plate to help make our circuit work. Sometimes this is called big R sub P. I wound up using big RL because I wanted to make sure we don't get it mixed up with this little RP. There's no clear, obvious choice what's the best notation here. So if you have numbers for these, you can plug them in, compute some numbers, and plug the numbers into this formula up here, and that's nice and easy. But let's take it the abstract way and plug A in here and R out in here but leave everything in the variable algebraic form. So then we get everybody's favorite thing, which is piles of algebra. Trust me, I'm going somewhere with this, just hang on. So here I've substituted in A, and here I've substituted in R out. And if we take this parallel combination and spell it out explicitly, we get something that looks like this. And then I notice, okay, well, this denominator down here, it's the same as this 
denominator in the denominator down here. So if I multiply this across, I'll have all of this stuff in the denominator over here on the left times REL, and then it will cancel with the denominator that's down here. So just taking this expression at the bottom of the slide and rewriting it looks like this, same expression. Let me go ahead and multiply that denominator through. And then what we can do is we can try to rearrange these terms a little bit to get something that's a little more sensible to try to interpret. That's not a whole lot more sensible, but at least it's a shorter expression. Okay, so here I have REL. When I multiply it by RL, I get this term down here. And if I multiply it by these next two terms, I see that, well, these next two terms look like the expression in brackets over here. So I could write this as all of this stuff in brackets here, that's common to both of them, times REL plus RL. This is still a mess. It's not really obvious how to interpret what's going on here. But I'm doing this to prove something in a few slides. Now, if you don't like any of this Thevenin stuff, you don't have to use it. You can dig into the details of the amplifier itself and apply the external load directly. So here's our common cathode amplifier without the external load. Now, if I were to add an external load and think about this, well, let's see, I have RL going to the small signal ground. I have REL going to a real ground. Our circuit doesn't care about the difference between a small signal ground and a quote unquote real ground. So it's kind of seeing a new load. It's just the original RL in parallel with the external load. So I could replace RL here with RL in parallel with REL. Same thing down here. Oh, that's a bit of a mess. And that will give me my loaded gain. Okay, let's rewrite this equation pretty PowerPoint typeset style. And let's expand out this parallel combination. So I wind up with RL plus REL down here. And I'll multiply the numerator and the denominator by that quantity in order to clear out that fraction. So I wind up with an RL plus REL term. And the reason I'm going through all this algebra is I want to make sure that the two approaches give you the same final answer. The starting point of the two approaches provides different ways of thinking about the problem, but they should give us the same ultimate answer. So just copying down the solutions we had from the previous slides, for the approach we just talked about where you lump in the external load ahead of time, we get this expression. From the earlier slide where we use Thevenin equivalence and the voltage divider, we get this expression. This was just copied down directly from those previous slides, and we see that they are the same. Just the way I worked out the algebra, I had these things in different orders, but they're the same expression. Now, the nice thing about the Thevenin approach is it lets you think about an amplifier core on its own then apply it to a bunch of different kinds of external loads without having to go back and rethink about what the internals of the amplifiers are. And it gives you a nice way of thinking about chaining amplifiers together. So if we have a particular input that we structured as we had before, here I'm assuming that this voltage source has no output impedance of its own, so my input to the first amplifier Vn1 is just Vn. Well, to figure out what the output of that first amplifier is, I can multiply it by the fact of going through the raw amplification aspect of the amplifier itself times the voltage divider we get from applying it to the input impedance of the next stage. And now the output voltage of the first stage becomes the input voltage of the second stage. And then we can just chain these together. So we can go through a second stage where the output of the second stage goes into a third stage. And now let's suppose we are going back to the outside world and the output of the third stage is being applied to some sort of external load resistance that I'm representing with REL, and we get a voltage divider from that. So we have these three factors together. Now, if you want, you don't have to use this Thevenin formulation. You could encapsulate this effect by just digging into the details of the amplifiers and including the effect of whatever the external load resistance being provided by the next stage is when you're doing that calculation. So this involves digging into the guts of each of the individual amplifiers. But if you do that, you could say, okay, well, if I do that properly, I can just multiply together the loaded gains I get from each of the amplifiers. 
But again, you have to then treat each one separately. But there is an important caveat. All of this Thevenin equivalent business assumes we have linear circuits. And of course, one of the most interesting aspects of tube amplifiers and why guitar players like them is because of their nonlinearities. In particular, as far as our analysis in this class is concerned, when you're talking about things like figuring out how much headroom you have, then you do have to explicitly include the effects of loading. And we'll look at that in the next lecture.